Hi guys, it's Lita, graphic designer, art director, and co-founder of Brooklyn-based studio, Wade and Lita. I've been diving into some of the rich design capabilities on Editor X, and I've found a pretty cool way to incorporate movement into my work. In this class, I'm gonna show you how I used a grid and sticky positions to make these spheres appear as you scroll the page. So let's get into it. I like to work with wide blank sections, so we're gonna start off by hiding this header, and we're gonna do the same thing here to the footer. Now I'm gonna head over to this action bar here and apply a grid. I'm gonna need more rows than that, so I'll choose a custom one and set it to one by nine. Okay, great, so now you can see by these blue lines that I've got nine rows in my grid, but I wanna make them bigger, so I'm gonna click Adjust Grid and Edit Grid to change the size. I want each row to take up the whole screen, so I'm gonna give this row a height of 100 viewport height. And I'll do the same thing for the other rows too. Yeah, this page is gonna be really long. Now I'll head over to the inspector panel where I can control the exact size, position, and behavior of any element on my site. I'm gonna use this to change the page color to black. My grid lines, they're gonna be a little harder to see now, but just bear with me. To add my images, I'll use this add panel. It's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. This is where you add all kinds of different elements and layouts to your page. I'll go to the media files that I uploaded earlier and I'm gonna add this image of an arm. It's actually my arm. I want this image to reach a little bit further than half the page, so let's set the width of the image to 65% and check to scale proportionately. Center it, align it to the right. Oh, and uh, dock it to the right too. And under scroll, I'll set this fixed so that it stays put on the page as you scroll. I have a lot of requirements, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's preview this on different screen sizes. All right, now the fun part, time to add our spheres. If you squint your eyes, you can see the thin blue lines that are separating our rows. I'm gonna scroll down to the second row and add a container from the add panel. Then I'm gonna stretch it to fill the entire row and use the design panel to remove these borders. I'm gonna go back to my media gallery and add the first sphere and adjust the positioning from the inspector panel. Notice that I'm setting the left margin in percentage and the top margin in pixels. That's because percentages will be affected by changes in the viewport width, but we want the top and bottom margins to remain fixed even when we change the screen size. So now that I have it set exactly where I want it, I'll grab that container I added earlier using these breadcrumbs and set the scroll effect to sticky. This is gonna make the sphere move as you scroll and stick to the top. All right, let's set up the next sphere on the third row. I'm gonna add a container again and stretch it and remove the borders. Then I'm gonna to go to the media gallery and drag in the second sphere, adjust its position and set the margins. From the blue breadcrumbs, I'll grab the container and make sure its scroll effect is set to sticky. Hang on though, we're not done yet with this sphere. I wanna add some depth to the whole scrolling experience. So I'm gonna use this action bar to access the photo studio and adjust the brightness and contrast. Don't underestimate these little changes, they can make a huge difference. So I'll just continue to do the same set of actions to the rest of my spheres. It's super important that I set each container to sticky so that the spheres stack under each other at very specific points as you scroll the page. Okay, we're almost there. I just have one final sphere to set up. You know the drill. I'll add my container, stretch it, and remove the borders. 
I'm gonna grab my image from my media gallery and this time I'll align it to the bottom and center. I'll set all the margins to zero and dock it at the bottom. Just need to make sure my container is set to sticky. And that's it. Let's preview our spheres in motion. So this is only one example of how you guys can use a grid and sticky position to create a dynamic viewing experience. But you can take what you've learned here and just run with it. Check out my next class where I'll show you how I use header scrolls to really celebrate the element of surprise.